On August 24th, 1986, Paul Morgan's life was forever changed. He was in an accident which left him paralyzed. Paul and several of his friends had been out boating that day. They were on their way home, pulling the boat on a trailer behind the truck. Paul fell out of the back of the truck and was run over by the boat trailer they were towing. He spent three months in and out of hospitals. The injury has resulted in several back surgeries as well as having a kidney removed. Paul's lifestyle changed dramatically after the accident. After much pain and rehabilitation, he has regained limited walking ability with the help of leg braces. This was how Paul Morgan would describe the incident that would alter the course of his life forever. And here's the thing, this happened all the way back in 1986 and medical technology has progressed a lot since then. Although the doctors did what they could do at the time, Paul knew that modern procedures could drastically improve the quality of his life. But the thing about these new procedures is they would require an amputation that Paul's insurance provider didn't feel was necessary. But Paul was no quitter, he hatched a plan. Paul's plan was to crowdfund the removal of his feet and reward the donors with a live stream of the amputation of his feet using a homemade guillotine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of CutOffMyFeet.com. You might need a guillotine to cut off your feet, but cutting off your pubes is a lot easier. That's why this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Their Perfect Package 2.0 includes the Lawnmower 2.0, extra safe so you know you don't cut yourself up. You have the Crop Preserver, which helps preserve your crop, meaning your, your ball area. You got the Crop Reviver, which, you know, it's throughout, throughout the day if you want to spray your balls a little with the, the Reviver. <laughs> And when you purchase the Perfect Package 2.0 kit, you get the biggest bang for your buck. As a subscriber, you get 25% savings off your order instantly, a new replacement blade for your lawnmower trimmer every three months, making sure that you can always get the cleanest ball shave. And for a limited time, subscribers get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag as well as the Anti-Shave Boxers, a $39 value. Use code WANG to get 20% off your order and free shipping. To get the whole Perfect Package 2.0, just go to manscaped.com and use code WANG. The American healthcare system is a disaster. We pay way too much money to insurance companies, and when you actually need to use the insurance companies, they do everything they possibly can to make sure that you don't get what you paid for. And that's even if you have insurance, otherwise people seem to be increasingly turning to GoFundMe to have other people pay their medical bills. But GoFundMe has only even been around since 2010, and it's been much more recent that it became socially acceptable to use it in that way. But that doesn't mean that this whole thing started with them. Enter Paul Freck Morgan. In 2001, Paul created a website called CutOffMyFeet.com where he proposed his plan to cut off his feet. And although this sounds like this setup for some kind of uh, body integrity identity disorder based manga, this actually wasn't based on any kind of deep-seated compulsion that he had, rather some kind of medical necessity. He did it out of a very real medical concern that would improve the quality of his life. After the boating accident that I spoke about at the beginning of the video, Paul became paralyzed beneath his knees. Here's how he described the condition. Paul's accident partially severed the T12 in his spinal cord. This has resulted in partial paralysis from the waist down. Above the knees, Paul has working quadriceps, adductors, abductors, and medial hamstrings. The paralysis increases below the knees, leading to complete paralysis of the feet. He has feeling all the way to his ankles on the front side of his legs and a dull sensation on the back side of his legs. He has no feeling or movement below the ankles. A procedure was performed to salvage what they could of his movement, but it didn't go perfectly. During the initial surgery, when the spinal injury occurred, which was two days after the accident, the thoracic 11 lumbar one were fused by Harrington rods. A year later, another surgery was needed to remove the Harrington rods. However, there was a piece of wire left in my back for no apparent reason. It showed up in the x-ray like a wire in a bread tie. There was also a piece of bone for my right pelvis used in the fusion of the T11 and T12 L1 vertebrae. Paul was a bit unsatisfied with the results of his procedure, but there was little that he could do at the time. 
But the years would go by and medical technology would improve, and in 2001, Paul hatched a plan with his buddies to help improve his life. The idea. Paul Morgan is a man who desperately wants to lead a normal life again. When the accident first happened, the technology was not available for that to happen. While the technology is now available for Paul to lead a better life, the financial burden would be much more than he could afford. Since Paul is on Medicare slash Medicaid, his insurance will not cover the amputation and new prosthetics because it is not deemed a necessary procedure. Paul also receives medical disability and his Medicare plan does not even cover the cost of his catheter bag. Paul doesn't want to fight a no-win battle with the insurance and medical communities in the United States. Paul is using this event as a chance to speak out against the lack of care in the medical field and the insurance industry. He strongly believes that this could make great strides in the much needed insurance and medical reform in the United States. This amputation is simply Paul's way of saying that even though corporate America has refused him, he will get his new prosthetics and improve his quality of life. Paul and his friend, Kevin Nicholson, came up with the idea to charge internet access and cut off Paul's feed on the internet. By charging a small fee for the webcam access, Paul will raise the money he needs for the operations, prosthetics, and rehabilitation. The stream was scheduled to go down on September 19th of 2001 and people could gain access by paying $20. And in addition to webcam access, they would also get exclusive updates from Paul as well as be entered in a contest to be able to see the amputation live and in person. The contest was won by Jared Pallone of Pompano Beach, Florida. Congratulations, Jared. And don't worry, after getting his feet cut off, Paul wasn't just gonna hop around on stumps and go, what are we gonna do now? He had a plan. A plan that was outlined in part in his FAQ section. Aren't you worried about losing too much blood or about bleeding to death? I plan on having medical professionals on location to stop the bleeding. We will also be using a Dr. Bovey machine to cauterize the legs. This is the same type of machine that is used in hospitals during amputations. What are you going to do with your feet after you cut them off? Would you consider an auction? I'm not sure if that's legal. In our initial planning, we had talked about purchasing human legs or a cadaver to test the blade of the guillotine. Unfortunately, it's illegal, a federal crime, to buy or sell bodies or body parts. So, since an auction is not an option, but I like the idea, I guess I'd like to have my legs frozen. Then maybe one day medical science will find a way to let me use them again. Are you insane? No, I am not insane. This is something that I thought through very carefully. But for all of you who still doubt, I plan to have a full psychiatric evaluation done to prove that I'm completely sane. Paul's website would spread mostly by word of mouth until that July when he called into the Howard Stern Show. Although I was unable to find a recording of the episode, essentially he just outlined the whole process, what his plan was, and mentioned that he would need $150,000 to make this all come true. And from that point on, the website exploded and this was amplified even further by mainstream media coverage. He even managed to pick up some classy new advertisers on his website. And thus, the construction of his homemade guillotine began. But all this attention would be a bit of a mixed blessing, as shortly after his call into the Howard Stern show, he would receive contact from the Mississippi Attorney General's office. A spokeswoman for Mississippi Attorney General Mike Moore said state officials had been in touch with Morgan's lawyer about the matter. We have heard about this, and we have contacted his attorney because we are concerned, said Nancy East, Moore's spokeswoman. East said the state had offered to have Morgan evaluated by a surgeon in Jackson, the state capital, if Morgan agreed not to go ahead with the amputation. East said the internet amputation could violate a number of state laws, including a mayhem statute and laws protecting consumers from fraud. But despite these legal concerns, Paul decided to go forward with his original plan. Albeit he did delay it to Halloween, and then November 30th, and then eventually January 5th. The biggest holdup being that he just wasn't making the money that he thought he was going to make. Despite the fact that his site was getting tens of thousands of visitors now, he only got about 20 people to sign up for the live stream. Not even enough to cover the cost of production, let alone all of his medical bills. And that's definitely a bit of a sign of the times. I mean, if you think about it, if this happened today, it would probably go viral instantly. 
If he set up a GoFundMe, he would probably reach that $150,000 goal instantly. And legal considerations aside, if the stream were to happen, he would probably make money hand over fist. But in 2001, that infrastructure simply wasn't there. Paul would wind up missing the January 5th date as well and calling into the Stern Show one more time, this time to explain what happened. He would also make one more update to his website. I know many of you have been looking forward to the guillotine amputation of my feet on January 5th. However, these are now the existing conditions. The upside, I have secured a production crew, EMT services, lighting, camera crews, director, live band, the video and DVD production, lighting, location, production manager, and, oh yes, the guillotine. The downside. Corporate lawyers have caused me to lose several members of the crew, the satellite truck, and the initially interested investors who were covering the production costs of the amputation event. This being the case, the amputation of my feet by guillotine is postponed until the production money for the event has been secured. Many of you wonder why I am not using the sign-up money to pay for the costs. The money paid for memberships is an escrow until after I perform the amputation. So, I am hoping to find an interested investor to help me get this amputation underway. If you interested in financing the production costs of the event, I would love to talk to you. Please email me at freck at cutoffmyfeet.com. Paul Freck Morgan. Ultimately, this was the last update on Paul's website, and the stream would never happen. Cutoffmyfeet.com would expire later that year, and Paul Morgan would seemingly disappear from the internet entirely. And that seems to be where the story ends now. But if you know what happened to Paul, if he ever cut off his feet, or what happened to him, please let me know. I would love to find out what happened to him and have an update for you guys. But anyway, if you like this video, you'll probably also like my one about urinalpoop.com. I'm out of here.